Yo, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well today. Now in this video, I wanna talk about a very niche use case in the generalized AI community, that being fine tuning. Now, not many people are dabbling with this. People on the very cutting edge have been doing this for quite some time now, but I feel like there isn't too, too many tutorials on YouTube explaining fine tuning on OpenAI's platform in just a very simple, easy to understand, easy to follow way. So hopefully, this tutorial can fill the gap there. Now, use cases for fine tuning, ways it comes in handy. If you've tried prompting, you've crafted this immaculate prompt, you're trying to get detailed outputs that are consistent over time at volume at scale, then you'll know that that is a fairly hard thing to accomplish, especially to stay consistent. So if that hasn't worked and you're getting frustrated, maybe fine tuning is for you and you wanna look into creating a model that is trained on a large data set that you provide to it that is essentially lasered in on one task and is very good at one thing. That's kind of like the basic idea of it. And then that model will perform extremely well at scale and at volume. So let's get into it. It's gonna be a good one. You can just go on your desktop, new folder, create a new folder. We will be needing that. Now, once you have a folder, um, Am I okay? Move to trash. So we, we will be needing a folder here. So you're, you're gonna wanna go ahead and make, a, make a folder on your desktop. I called mine OpenAI Fine Tuning. So now once we have this folder, the first step in this fine tuning process here is we're gonna wanna head over to platform.openai.com slash docs fine tuning. Literally just Google OpenAI Fine Tuning. This will be the first search result. Now we're gonna wanna hop on here. Why do we want to hop on this? Because it has a lot of valuable information for fine tuning. So OpenAI has a very specific way that they require you to actually fine tune their models. And there's certain conventions that you will need to follow here. This is very important. So as you can see, fine tuning GPT-4 and 4.0 is an experimental program. So we won't be accessing those models, which is okay. So we're going to be looking at GPT-3.5 Turbo, 0, 0.125 which as you can see is the recommended ones. So that's the one we're gonna be using. And we have a few of these other ones down here. Now, this is kind of what I was circling back to before. So when to use fine tuning. Fine tuning OpenAI text generation models can make them better for specific applications, but it requires a careful investment of time and effort, which kind of isn't that true. I mean, if you're training GPT-4.0, that is true. But for our use case, don't listen to it. Now, there's many tasks at which our models may not initially appear to perform well. That's where prompting comes in. And if you figure out that it's still shit at it, then you, you, know, you can fine tune it further. So then we come down to preparing our data set. Now, this is extremely important. So for the old models, Babbage and DaVinci, you can follow the prompt completion pair format as shown below. So as you can see, we have our prompt and then our prompt text, completion, and then our ideal generated text. However, for our use case, we're gonna be using 3.5 Turbo. So we have this message content system. Message, role system, content, and then this is gonna be our system prompt, how we want our model to act. We have our role as the user, content, and then this is essentially gonna act as our prompt. And then we have the role of assistant, which is gonna be our output from our model, our desired output, our ideal generated text. Now, they also have this multi-turn multi -turn chat example. We don't have to worry about that, worry about that too much. So we're gonna, we're gonna wanna go ahead and copy this right here. Head on over to GPT or your preferred LLM, copy and paste this in, and we're gonna say, this is a training data set I'm using. I need 20 more just like these with no duplicates. Perfect. I don't know why it's giving it to me in give it all in one code block adjacent L file. Now this is another very important thing. It needs to be in JSON L. That is the format that OpenAI recognizes for fine tuning. So that is extremely important. Role user, what's the tallest mountain? cool yeah looking good 
All right, so this is gonna generate us our data set. Now, the hard thing about training these models is just finding good data, good clean data, and then finding it at scale. So that can be a huge issue when you're kind of dealing with these models and when you're getting into it. But for our use case, GPT will do it just fine. It's gonna generate these and I'll come back when it's all done. All right, we're all done here. Now, we're gonna to wanna to head on over to our OpenAI account. If you don't have one, create one, and then head over to platform.openai.com slash fine tune. And you should come to something like this. Now, this is going to be our dashboard where we can control some inner workings of the OpenAI API. We have our playground assistance chat, but we're gonna to wanna to go to this fine tuning right here. We wanna click create. Now, this is so simple. OpenAI make it so extremely simple. Now, I will create another tutorial if people want it on actually how to do this in the command line and actually in VS Code all from scratch and upload your model there, fine tune it. OpenAI is a very good command line interface that we can use to do this. However, we will just be using this for now. Now, for our file that we created, oh shoot, okay, so we're actually gonna wanna open up our file. Okay, we're gonna wanna create a file in our folder that we created on the desktop. OpenAI fine tune.jsonl. Come back to here, copy this code, paste it right in here. Cool, so now we have our data set. It looks good. We can see it's color coded. Very helpful to just to kind of analyze it in here. Uh, as you can see, we have 26, pretty far from the ideal amount. It does say that it's ideal to have at least over 200 in their documentation, but whatever. It is what it is. Now, we're gonna wanna move from here. Come back to our fine tuning page here. We're gonna wanna click upload file. Come over to our JSONL file right here. Uploading. There we go. Now, the suffix is very helpful. So it can just help us like discover, or sorry, find our bot easier if we have a bunch of fine tuning. So we can just be like YouTube, YouTube test one, the seed. The seed is something that just like it says here, it controls the reproducibility of the job. So if you're passing the same seed to different jobs, you'll get similar outputs, but we won't worry about that for now. Everything is looking good, everything's set. We'll click create here. It's gonna create our job. It's gonna validate our files first of all. If you get an error here, it'll normally tell you pretty clearly like what you did wrong. If your JSON isn't, isn't in the right format or whatever the case may be. All right, so this is Gowen's fine tuning, a little sip of coffee. Actually, I take that back. It's not fine tuning yet. We're just validating the files as it says right here. Now, this will take a second. You can imagine how long this will take if we had like 20,000 data points, but we have a fairly small data set, which is good for this use case. It'll go a little bit quicker. We have three epochs, batch size is one, just validating. Now it says the status is fine tuning in here. Now it's changed to fine tuning over here. So clearly our files were validated. We didn't get any errors. Now, if you do get an error, it'll tell you very clearly, as I said before, so it should be fairly easy to troubleshoot. I didn't get an error in here. If you tell GPT to output just JSON L, then it should do a pretty good job and you shouldn't get an error, especially if you give it like three or four examples, as I showed you earlier. So if we go back to fine tuning, we're going, it's fine tuning. All right, so it's still fine tuning here. Now, if we look at these things on the side, you may be thinking, what do some of the some of these mean? We have our suffix here. So our easy identifier here, we can see our base model. We have a timestamp when we've created this fine tuning job. We have our job ID. So this will be used to actually access this data programmatically if, you're, if you wanna pull your fine tuned model into a software. And these train tokens here, so you can think of train tokens, the number of words process that the model's using to train on. For these epochs here, you can think of these as like the number of times the model has gone through the data set. So our epochs are set at three here. So you can think about it like reading a book from cover to cover. That would be one epoch, right? And then if you read over it again, you're probably gonna know the contents of the book a little bit better than you did the previous time. And every time you read over it, you're gonna probably pick up a couple more things that you didn't the first time. So that's kind of how the models learn here. Um, the batch size is one. That's just gonna be the number of training examples used in one iteration. 
Now, as you can see, our training loss here, it starts quite high. And then as the model keeps going, you can see that there's a pretty sharp drop off here. So this training loss here, you can think about it like how many mistakes the model has made while it's training. So it's like shooting like free throws and missing a bunch. The goal is to obviously like reduce errors and reduce misses. So this is how many times it's like missed kind of. So as we go here, you can see the training loss finished at around 0.1784. But as you can see at one point it was up to like 2.4 and then it slowly falls off, which is good. That's what we want. So as you can see, our status is succeeded. Now, if we go into our playground right here and we click on our model, you can see that this is going to be our fine tuned model right here. The most recent fine tuned job. Now the system instructions aren't actually included right off the bat. This is probably something that they're going to fix in a future update. However, our system instructions are going to be essential for what we actually want it to accomplish. So just like in our code over, where's our code? Why am I, what else happening? Here we go. So in our code right here, we can see this is our system prompt, right? So Marv is a factual chatbot that is also sarcastic. So in a future update, I imagine that they're literally just gonna um, pull that into the system prompt. So then we won't actually have to add it in, but for now we have to add it in. Then if we enter a message and say like, what are the, what are the three primary colors? And we run this. So Marv has said red, blue, and yellow. Stick to those for your next masterpiece, which is very online, very on brand with the data that we trained it on, the small data set, and also our system prompt we gave it here. I'll do one more just so you can see what is the sport of Canada. Yeah lacrosse not hockey surprisingly so we're getting decent outputs and then as you can imagine they are gonna well OpenAI has actually said themselves that within their training protocols the quality of output nearly increases with every time you double your data set size so 100 200 200 400 it's gonna increase at kind of a linear rate but anyway so this is how we do this here within OpenAI's playground. Very simple, very easy as you saw. All we have to do is manipulate a little bit of data and toss it in and we have a beautiful fine tuned model at our disposal. So if we go into usage over here, as you can see, this isn't free. However, it's not that much money. So as you can see, June 12th, it's June 12th right now. This is the fine tuning job. It costs seven cents to do that one job. So it's very minimal and even if you had 10,000 data points and like five epochs it would be like you know under five bucks right so it's not that crazy now I want to move in to the second part of the tutorial where I show you how to pull your model out of OpenAI and actually in to an application now I don't know how far I'll go with it but I'll get you started and hopefully it'll give you some ideas on what you can do with this all right so now if we want to actually pull our fine tune model and use it programmatically. So let's head back on over to our VS code and let's open a new terminal here. Now we're in our directory, OpenAI fine tuning right there. Now we're going to want to just pip install OpenAI. I already have it. As you can see, requirement already satisfied. Sa uh, and of course, make sure you have Python installed on your machine. Very simple. Now we're going to create a brand new file on the side. I've named mine to use fine tuned model.py. I have some code here that will essentially help us utilize our brand new beautiful fine tuned model. We will need to put our OpenAI API key in. The best practice is to use a .env file um, so we can store it 
and not have it show up in our code. But for now, we're just gonna hard code it in. Again, not best practice, don't do this. But for the video, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna head back on over to here. We're gonna go to our API keys. We're gonna click create a new secret key. We'll call it, um, fine tune, fine tuned key. Create secret key, give it all permissions, copy the key, head back on over here, paste it right in here. Boom, save that. Now, next steps here, we have our model, right? FTGPT3 Turbo custom suffix ID. So now this looks complicated, but all this is, is the ID of our fine tune model. And we go to fine tuning. We can see that this is our YouTube test one that we just did. And this is gonna be our full ID of our model. Copy and paste that, head back on over to our code, toss this in. Hit save, command S on Mac, I think control S on Windows. And now we can give it a run. Oh, we can run Python and then the name of our file, whatever you chose to name it. We run Python 3, I believe I have Python 3, that might be the use. Yeah, so if you have Python 3, you have to add a 3 after Python. So you, what is the, what is the national so we, we, we want to make sure that we change our system prompt here, just like we did in the actual fine tuning dashboard. If you get an error, just read the error, check it out. You're probably going to run into something. The documentation changes all the time and things get deprecated. Programs don't work anymore, which is super annoying. But other than that, we can run this again. What is... Okay, we're still getting it. So I ran into a couple errors there. So what I was getting is that this, uh, where is it? The response equals openai.chatcompletions.create is actually deprecated in the new, I guess, in the new interface. So we needed to run pip install openai equals equals 0 0.28. So we actually had to downgrade to a previous version of openai. Um, import open AI up here. So that's okay, totally fine. So all I did, exact same code as before, put your model in here, put your API key in there, and then make sure you put the system prompt in. And then all you gotta do is run, is run Python 3 or just Python, depending on what you're using. Use fine tune model.py or whatever name your file is. We run that, we'll get you right here. And I'll say, hello. Again, this is using the API, so it is costing money, but it's like cents, it's really nothing. Hey there, why, what is your purpose? Takes a second, it's calling the API right now. To indulge in mindless conversations with you, lucky me. Perfect, so now we've actually, we're actually using our fine-tuned model in a code base in the terminal. Super, super cool. Now, I am definitely gonna be making a video in the very, very near future on how you can break this out even further, maybe put it into like a Gradio interface. And I'm building my Chrome extension right here and how in my prompt generator, I'm actually going to be using a fine-tuned model to generate prompts. So maybe I will just show how I'm breaking it out. So every time somebody generates a prompt, it will actually be using a fine-tuned model. And these the, the responses you just saw in the terminal will be coming in to a real interface. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate it. And can't wait to see you in the next one. Take care.